So I've talked about hashing, and this is really important for uh, both Bitcoin and Ethereum and decentralized finance in general. So I think it's important for you to have uh, a deeper understanding about what is actually going on uh, with hashing. So let me give you an example. It's a really simple example. It's a simple hashing algorithm. So I want to send an email to Daniel, but um, I'm a little worried um, because there could be a problem with the transmission and somebody potentially corrupting uh, the email. So there needs to be some mechanism to verify that, uh, that what I sent her is exactly, um, you know, it has not been uh, corrupted. So um, this is the way that we're going to do it. So uh, I send an email to Danielle, but then, um, and the email is really simple. It's a single word, hello. And then I've got a coding scheme where each word is going to be encoded as a number. So A is 1, B is 2, dot, 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 Z is 26. So hello would be 8, 5, 12, 12, 15. And then I'm going to multiply those numbers together and I get 86,400. So I post that number on my website. And people looking at that number have no idea what it is. So Danielle gets my email and she uses the same coding system. And she comes up with 8,000 or 86,400. She checks my website, it matches. Therefore, um, the message is secure. So if there was some corruption, like uh, instead of hello, hello, H-A-L-L-O was sent, then when Danielle does the hashing, she would get 17,280. She looks on my website and sees 86,400, and she knows that there's been corruption, and we need to try again. But this simple hashing algorithm is unsatisfactory. It's way too simple. And it is subject to what's known in, um, in the hashing literature as a collision. And that is the two different inputs, two different words, give the same hash. And uh, I'll give you an example here that suppose an adversary intercepted the message and changed it from hello to something that's got a very different meaning, oh hell. Well, when Danielle gets that message and does the cryptographic hash that we've got, it's 86,400. And she has no idea the message has been corrupted. So we need to do better than this, but it's the basic idea of hashing. So what um, is used in, uh, in Bitcoin is a hash called Secure Hashing Algorithm 256 or SHA-256. And I've got a link here if you're interested, and I'll show you some output in a few minutes. This is a one-way function. Importantly, this is not encryption. So when you encrypt something, there's a key to decrypt to get back the original message. This is not how it works. Okay, and I'll give you uh, some intuition. The, the hash, the 256 hash, the 256 is the number of bits, the 256 bits. And, uh, and often we represent this in hexadecimal form. So hexadecimal is base 16, which is the number zero to nine plus the first six letters of the alphabet. So a total of 16 characters. And when you do that, you can represent, instead of the hash is 256 zeros and ones, it's much more compact. So it's 64 hexadecimal uh, characters. OK, 
Okay, so again, um, this is not encryption. So it doesn't matter the size of the input, whether it's the word hello, or whether it is a book, or anything digital. It could be a picture, it could be a movie. The output is 64 hexadecimal by characters. So let me just push this a little harder because I know some people are, are, are confused by this. So again, the cryptographic hash is not encryption because there's no way to reverse. And intuitively, think about you've got a, a movie. It's eight gigabytes. You feed it into a, a SHA-256 program and it delivers 64 characters. Does it make any sense to you that you could take those 64 characters and somehow unravel them into an eight gigabyte movie? I don't think so. So this is a one way function. And let me show you how it works with this website. I've got some screenshots. I'm going to do something really simple. Hello world, exclamation mark. Then I'll put a number after the, uh, the actual uh, word. So that's what it looks like. Hello world. And notice at the very bottom is the 64 um, uh, characters in, in terms of a hexadecimal. And when I make a, a change, so instead of hello world zero, hello world one, notice the hash is completely different. So it's not like you use the old hash and then just change like one character at the end. It is completely a different. Hello world two, completely different. If I went back and did the one, I would get back what I just showed you for one. So it is unique. So when you've got an input, it's got a unique output in terms of this hash. And then um, the, the last one I'll show you is kind of interesting. Um, hello world, uh, exclamation mark 4250. Notice the hash that's returned. It's got four leading zeros. So that's a little bit rare to have four leading zeros. So, so think about the probability of actually getting four zeros uh, in a row. So you got 16 characters, so it's one over 16 to the power of four. Indeed, that's the reason that the number is 4250, that I had to try a lot of numbers to get those four leading zeros. So think of me at my computer doing hello world zero, hello zero one, two, three, four, dot, 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 dot. And finally, when I get to four, two, five, zero, it's a lot of hashes, but I get the uh, four leading zeros. Um, so this is the SHA-256. Ethereum uses the KCOC 256, which is a different algorithm. And I will show you what the Hello World uh, 4250 looks like. Um, and it is a completely different hash. So it's a different algorithm. So that means when you put the same input into a SHA-256 as a KCOC 256, you're going to get different hashes. So again, uh, the KCOC 256 is used in Ethereum. The SHA-256 is used uh, in Bitcoin. So that's essentially uh, how it works. So um, the, the modern kind of example of my email um, is that uh, I send the email to Danielle, but then post the SHA-256 hash of the email on my website. And then when she gets the email, she does the SHA-256, sees that it matches the uh, hash on my website, and we know we're secure. So this sort of uh, hash does not suffer from the problem 
of a uh, collision, at least um, with uh, current computing, and uh, it is widely used. So this is used outside of decentralized finance. What I've described in an email is how emails actually work. This happens all the time to make sure there was no corruption of the email in the different hops it takes uh, over the uh, internet. Okay, so uh, there's a little bit more here. And it is what the miners do. And I need to explain mining to you. Mining is very important for this proof of work, which we introduced as Adam Back's idea to do a little work before you send that email. Well, we're going to have to do some work here also. And the basic intuition is the following. What we don't want to happen is for an adversary to go and corrupt a block. And then we know when that happens that uh, the last line will not match the first line unless the adversary actually goes and changes all of the future blocks so that the hashes actually do match after the block is corrupted. And when I say corrupted, it could be that the adversary takes a pile of cryptocurrency and sends it to themselves, even though they don't own it. They will own it if the corrupted block uh, propagates. So we need to make it very difficult uh, to do that. And this is where the mining actually comes in. So what the miner is doing is the following. The miner gathers the candidate transactions that are sitting in something called the memory pool. So these are transactions that are not confirmed yet. They're not yet on a blockchain. And the first thing the miner does is to verify the transactions. And verification is very easy. They just basically check to see if the person spending actually has the token to spend. So once they've verified, they put a group of transactions together. And um, the way I initially described this, you just run a hash and, uh, and then basically post that to a blockchain. It's not exactly how it happens. So what the miners are actually doing is looking for a special hash. A hash that's got a lot of leading zeros. There's a reason I showed you four leading zeros, and now I'm going to explain why. So the miners are cycling through numbers, just like I was cycling through. One, two, three, up to four, two, five, zero. But they go well beyond. So they've got their transactions, and they're just adding a little bit of data with this number, just like I added to Hello World 4250. And the number that they're adding is called a nonce, and that's short form for number only once. And the miners are actually going through, cycling through trillions of different nonces to try to find a hash that's got a lot of leading zeros. Okay, so a lot of computing power is actually used for this. And it's so much computing power that it makes it infeasible for an adversary to go change a block and then change the future blocks to make sure that everything uh, works. So it makes it computationally uh, infeasible. And that's what the miners are doing. They're verifying. They're doing this work so that it gives the Ethereum blockchain or the Bitcoin blockchain unprecedented security. It makes the blockchains immutable. And, and it, the cost is so enormous to take over the mining power of the network. It can't be done by any one person, and it's really infeasible to even think about doing it uh, by, let's say, a nation state. So it's unprecedented uh, computational power that's used for these blockchains, and it makes them uh, very uh, secure. So um, it is not just 
the money that you would have to spend on computing power, the computing power itself is specialized. This is not like buying a desktop uh, computer. The mining rigs, as they're called, are highly specialized. They do one thing. In the Bitcoin world, a SHA-256. In the Ethereum world, a KCOC-256. Okay, so these, just to think about ordering the equipment to basically take over 51% uh, of the network is really, really infeasible. So, um, so this is how proof-of-work blockchains uh, operate. We'll talk later in the learning experience about different alternatives to uh, proof-of-work, including proof-of-stake. And at the very end, we talk about some of the risks, including environmental risk, and I have uh, some comments on the extreme amount of energy, and most of it fossil fuel-based, that's used in mining and what that means for the future of cryptocurrency.